All right, YouTube, so yesterday we got the massive update for Fallout 76, and yes, it is massive. They kind of already warned us about this with one of their articles on Bethesda.net. It ended up being around like 48 gigabytes, so you might as well say another 50 gigabyte update. These download sizes are getting pretty ridiculous. I'm starting to see a lot of people talk about it. This is like the second or third rather large update we've had this month alone. Well, this month alone, you had to download the game, which is about 50 gigabytes. There's a day one patch that's about 50 gigabytes. And then there was this patch, which is another roughly 50 gigabytes. So, like, you're looking at 150 gigs we've had to download so far just in the month of November. Anyways, I told you guys once the patch notes dropped, I would cover them and let you know what the update actually includes. And that came out yesterday, but I wanted to make that GameStop video. But here we are today. So first up, we have the general fixes, which is performance. Several issues have been addressed to resolve hitches during gameplay and other performance issues. Stability. The Fallout 76 game client and servers have received additional stability improvements. Xbox. Fixed an issue that could lead to instability on certain menus. So pretty much as the category is titled, just general fixes for the game to make the game perform better. I can kind of understand the Xbox one because I get like instability whenever I hit certain crafting benches and I'm going through trying to just, you know, break down my scrap or try to mod one of my weapons like it just starts lagging like crazy and it takes forever just to even exit the bench. First up for bug fixes, art and graphics, ambient occlusion, place items no longer leave behind shadow outlines after being picked up, camera, the game camera now pans more smoothly when the player enters furniture, graphics, the cover of Tesla Science Magazine issue 9 no longer appears solid red on pickup or when inspected. That last one is very specific, which is probably why I've never even experienced it. The shadow outline thing is something I've noticed since as far back as the Greenbrier event when I first watched some gameplay. I don't remember which, you know, influencer or YouTuber it was. Watching their gameplay, and I remember there was a shotgun leaned up against the wall. I remember seeing them looted and seeing that shadowed outline of the shotgun still, like, almost as if it's there against the wall. And then it just kind of disappears. It's been a thing that's been there since at least then. I've never heard anybody talk about it. I wanted to mention it before in a video, just never found the right video, I guess, to mention it. I didn't know if it was like intentional. Like maybe for whatever reason, it's something Bethesda wanted to be in the game, but apparently it was some sort of a bugger, or whatever, and they fixed it. So next up for bug fixes, we have enemies. General fix an issue in which some enemies could chase the player farther than intended, which I have definitely experienced. Loot, ghoul, and scorched officers now correctly drop new code pieces upon being killed by a player. So yeah, I've definitely been chased pretty far by some enemies. I know pretty early on with the beta, I remember getting chased by some gutsy robots. I don't remember what the location would have been, but I remember running from them because they were just like level 20-something. Like and I was like, I don't even know if I was at level 10 yet. So I was like, I ran away from that. And they chased me for what I felt like was further than they normally would in a Fallout game or pretty much any other game. And then a Scorch Beast, I've had a Scorch Beast chase me pretty far before. Now these might be a little intentional since Scorch Beasts are like the big bosses of the game. So maybe they're like following you around could be a lot farther than other enemies. But I've definitely had a Scorch Beast chase me down and absolutely destroy me. Next up, we have camp, workshops, and crafting. Blueprints, fix an issue that could cause blueprints to break into smaller parts after logging out and back into Fallout 76. Plans, paints applied to power armor during the Fallout 76 beta will now appear correctly on the items that were painted, and those paints can now correctly be applied to additional sets of power armor. Repair, fix an issue that could cause an item to return to a broken state after being repaired. Now, I haven't experienced any of those issues personally, but I can tell you that I would be pretty damn mad if I went back to a workbench with some broken items. You wasted my adhesive and all the other resources you need to repair that item, and it just rebroke it or something. That'd be very angering. Next up, we have Quest, which is obviously a quick one. Bureau of Tourism, the Prickett's Fort token dispenser can now be repaired, and players can no longer walk through it. I don't even know this quest or location, or whatever it is. Quite a bit for PvP, pacifist mode, players with pacifist mode enabled who engage in PvP by contesting a workshop owned by another player will now correctly deal full damage to that player as long as they remain hostile. Respawn, choosing the respawn option after dying during PvP combat will now correctly clear any active hostile status towards other players. Seek revenge, cap rewards will now display correctly when choosing the seek revenge respawn option after being killed by another player. Seek revenge again. When targeted by another player who is seeking revenge, the reward amount will now display the correct number of caps that can be earned by killing that player. To this day, I still haven't even attempted to try out PvP in this game. You guys already know, I've talked about it at nauseum. In my opinion, PvP is entirely pointless, which is why I've never even cared to engage in it. Now, they talked about, we've seen, you know, in the future, they're planning for 2019, some sort of, like, team faction PvP type of thing. And once that comes out, once we have, like, a PvP-focused, like, mode or whatever in this game, 
I might mess with it then, but as of right now, it's like there's just no point really to PvP. And last up, we have user interface. Languages, Korean fonts will now be displayed correctly in game menus. Hotkeys, the take photo hotkey can no longer be rebound, it is now tied to the spacebar on PC and the A button on controllers. Hotkeys, fix an issue that could cause the take snapshot button in photo mode to display an incorrect hotkey. Social, fix an issue that could cause players to disappear from each other's social menus if two players each sent a friend invite to one another. Social, fix an issue that prevented newly equipped player icons from displaying to other players in social menu. So another massive update for Fallout 76 that's really just trying to fix the performance issues and some bugs with like quests and PvP and other things like that. Um, so these, these big updates are getting a little bit tedious at this point, man. I don't even have this one downloaded yet at this point. Like it's just, it's such a, a hassle to have to download these massive updates constantly. I'm seeing a lot of people talk about that recently. That'll probably be the subject of tomorrow's video. I just kind of want to put this it all into one video, kind of talking about these really big updates that we're getting for this game all the time. By the way, those are the patch notes from yesterday's update, November 19th, 2018 update of Fallout 76. Hopefully, if you were experiencing some of these problems after downloading this update, you aren't experiencing them anymore. Leave your thoughts in the comments below, and if you guys want to enjoy the video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you guys are new. Turn on notifications. Follow me on Twitter at TheDashingDavid. Add my Discord. Links to my social networks are in the description and in the outro. Later, guys. Or at least less like